Hi, Founded fans, Jason here. Welcome to Anti-Federalist Fridays, and this week we are starting a new series of Anti-Federalist papers, The Federal Farmer, or Observations of the Federal Farmer. Now, The Federal Farmer is arguably one of the most important Anti-Federalist papers. It's right up there with Brutus, and just like Brutus and The Federalist Papers, The Federal Farmer was published in New York City. Now, it was published as a series of newspaper articles at first, but it really took off as a pamphlet, actually two pamphlets, and then some more pamphlets at the end. But we'll get there. What I want to talk about today is an introduction to the papers. We're going to be spending the next 18 weeks, every Friday, going through each individual paper. And while that may seem like a lot to cover one Antifederalist, well, I have something I'd like to read to you right here from Herbert Storing, one of the major researchers in the late 20th century about Antifederalists and the Antifederalist paper. He learned from the best and competed with the best writing about the Anti-Federalist Papers. And he says here, quote, There is no doubt that there is much repetition and that the additional letters are somewhat loosely constructed, but there is scarcely a letter that does not contain material of the first importance. And it is a mistake to confine one study of the Federal Farmers' arguments to the first five letters. Now, he says that because the first five letters, as I said, were published in a series of two articles. They were the most popular at the time, most widely read, uh, and sold the best, which was very important. They're also a little bit shorter. The, the additional papers don't sell quite as well, and that's why people often overlook them, but we're not going to do that here. We're going to do short episodes about each individual paper as I publish the articles alongside this on my website, founderoftheday.com. I do want to note, the actual name of the papers is not Federal Farmer or Observations of the Federal Farmer. It is <clears throat> Observations Leading to a Fair Examination of the System of Government Proposed by the Late Convention and to Several Essential and Necessary Alterations in It in a Number of Letters from the Federal Farmer to the Republican. The Republican's a little bit questionable who that character is. It's probably uh, Governor of New York at the time, George Clinton, being written to. The author is a little bit questionable also, though I will say, after the success of the first pamphlet, he actually published the additional pamphlets under the title, Are You Ready? An additional number of letters from the federal farmer to the Republican leading to a fair examination of the system of government proposed by the late convention, to several essential and necessary alterations in it, and calculated to illustrate and support the principles and positions laid down in the preceding letters. That is the title of a pamphlet. This person meant business. But who was this person? Well, sadly, we'll never know. At the time, it was widely attributed to Richard Henry Lee, and this was actually believed for all, about 150 years, till the mid-1700s, when um, Herbert Storing, who uh, wrote this, edited this, uh, his teacher, Murray Dry, was really the first person saying this, uh, and Murray Dry assembled the complete anti-federalist. At the same time, Gordon Wood, who's a name you might recognize, uh, in the late 70s, also kind of stumbled onto this research, realizing that Richard Henry Lee just doesn't seem to have been the author. It just doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, both the way it's written and the topics being focused on. Now, that leads to the question, okay, well, then who was it? Now, again, we'll probably never know for sure, but a lot of evidence seems to indicate it was Melanchthon Smith. Largely because Melanchthon Smith was a New York lawyer living in New York at the time and an outspoken anti-federalist who would speak against the Constitution on the floor of the New York Ratification Convention. Though he later flip-flopped and did vote for the United States Constitution. The Federal Farmer really relates a lot of the same information that Melanchthon Smith gave in his speeches. And furthermore, studying handwriting and things like that and the way words are written uh, really does point to him. And even uh, about 20 years ago, there was a comp... A they put it through a computer, a bunch of different candidates uh, next to the federal farmer to see whose handwriting it probably was. The computer, though these are late 90s computers, the computer did say it was Melanchthon Smith. Again, we can't be sure, though it's almost certainly not Richard Henry Lee as it was long assumed it was probably Melanchthon Smith. So while we talk about the federal farmer, it is going to primarily be a discussion around consolidating the government and how that will eliminate the states. And that is kind of a general topic of anti feminism anti-federalism, but as I said in the quote, and I guess I should say as Herbert Storing said, uh, it is important to go through all one to understand what was happening at the time, what anti-federalists were thinking, to a large degree what federalists were thinking when they created the United States Constitution. So 
Make sure you like and subscribe. Join me next week. I put out a founder every day, for those of you who don't know, but every Friday we'll be talking about the federal farmer for the next 18 weeks. It's going to be an adventure. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I sure hope you'll join me on said adventure. So thank you for watching. Uh, like I said, hit like, and if you're new here, subscribe for American Revolution seven days a week and the federal farmer for the next 18 weeks. I will be back with you tomorrow with another founder.